Hey yo, welcome to the wonderful world of Hungry Heath. Now I am not a class 3 trained chef. What I am is a self-taught home cook. I have studied under several television chefs. I have a PhD from YouTube University and a black belt in Google Foo. I love to cook. The only thing I love more than cooking is my own wife, the sensational Shelly Eats Steak. But today, we got another special episode for you in our continuing series about the low carb cruise that's coming up in May. This will be, I guess we're calling it episode two. Yeah. And I'm honestly gonna defer most of this over to Shelly because she's been doing all the research and she's been on this cruise line before. I've never have. I've only done uh, Carnival and Princess. But she's the one that roped me and forced me into going to cruises with her. And now I love it. I apologize to her almost weekly at least mm -hmm. for making her wait two years before I'm going to cruise. Like I could have been on more cruises. <laughs> I'm but sorry, oh, baby. No, I'm I sorry. had to wait. I had to convince somebody. Because I heard so many horror stories about it and I finally just caved in and said, all right, well, she does have pretty good taste. She's with me. So she can't be too you know, far off telling me this is going to be awesome. And sure enough, she I right. Yet love again. cruising. So baby, why don't you tell them about what do you say we're doing this time? It's about the dining packages and the drink packages. It's all the about board. beverage and dining on the cruise ship. So all we're, right. yeah, what we're going to do. I'm getting hungry just thinking about it. <laughs> oh, goodness, y'all. What we're going to do is answer all of your questions in regards to drinking uh, beverage packages and then we'll go over all of the dining options on the ship so this will have it'll be kind of lengthy going over all of that so we'll get started um, I did type up a lot of notes here so we get that going and then make sure I get this all all squared away and we'll put some show notes down below too if you're already booked on the cruise you'll be able to see a lot of the pricing and so forth, which can change. So whatever pricing I give today, in a month it could be different because the, the way Royal does theirs is it does fluctuate. So always log in after you've booked your cruise, go to plan my cruise, and then you can see the different options that are available for your cruise. Um, one thing is I want to start by saying if you have health, which I know a lot of us that are keto do have dietary restrictions. That's what I consider it. So for me, I always go gluten free. So what that means is I will inform the cruise ship, hey, I have a dietary need. Like for Heath, I'll put on there, you know, nut allergy plus gluten allergy. And then also I'll put gluten for myself. You can also do, there's dairy, if you're lactose intolerant. Uh, there's also a, um, trying to think, the other, kosher, mm -hmm. halal, those things are on there. What you'll do is once we're able to, um, you'll have a section on Royal Caribbean after you've signed in under your profile where you could put in dietary restrictions or you can email and uh, we'll put the email down below to special needs, but you wanna do it at least 45 days prior to the sailing. So right now when this airs in early December, we still have you know five and a half months. So we're good right now. So this is something, don't feel like you, oh, I got an email right now. You can't wait until like February, March and send that in to them as long as it's at least 45 days. And it's just so, that helps with their planning the ship, especially since so many of us are probably going to say, hey, we're gluten intolerant. And that way they can have more gluten-free options and staff according right. to our big numbers. So That's definitely smart. suggest doing that. We'll put the link to the email down below. You just want to put your board, your booking number in with that. And then they're, they're awesome. Every ship I've done this on, mostly the Princess, they're amazing. They'll come to you the night before, like in the dining room when you're dining, right? You'll get your menu, like your uh, fancy restaurant. At dinner, right? Yeah, at dinner. And a fancy restaurant. And then the 
waiter will come to you after you've eaten and you're sitting there and you're chit-chatting and he'll bring you the next night's menu to tell you, okay, here's what your gluten-free options are for the next night. And they, some cruise lines will actually print a gluten-free menu. Others, they'll say, here it is, here are the ones that are gluten-free. Um, and then Jerry informed us because he just got off a Royal Caribbean ship. If you go to the buffet for breakfast or lunch, they actually have an area marked gluten-free. That's awesome. I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, that's he cool. brought it up on the live. Awesome. So that's really good to hear as well that they are really serious about that. And I feel like cruise ships really understand that and really try to work with you. Didn't he, he, isn't he also the one that told us that he was confirmed that they have a separate section in the kitchen where they cook yeah. all the dietary needs specialties? Right, so when you are gluten intolerant, they actually make sure it's a clean area where it's not going to have any cross contamination. That is amazing. So that's why I say they take it very serious when you say that. So if you are someone who wants to be extra careful, you know, make sure you put in that dietary request or special needs request so that you get that listed on your whole um, booking so that they help you with that during the cruise. And then they're usually good if you go to any of their paid restaurants. Whenever they scan your card, they'll know right away and then they'll be able to, you know, let you know, oh, okay, well, here's this and this or here we can get this for you. Sometimes they'll ask, you know, are you gluten intolerant or gluten sensitive? And, you know, because, you know, sometimes like um, when we went to the steak restaurant or Princess, they were like, well, they couldn't do like a whole separate area depending on how sensitive we were. I was like, well, I'm okay if there's a little cross contamination for me. It's not serious like it is for some of our viewers like Patty. So it, at least they ask that type of thing. So if you are have a very serious gluten intolerance, you know, they can discuss that with you ahead of time and work with you on that. Awesome. So that's what that said first off for foremost. Now when we get into our beverages, I'm gonna first tell you this is what is included beverages. And he will make a list here. <laughs> And it's water, tea, coffee. Now, this is just regular brewed coffee, regular brewed tea, milk, lemonade, but you know lemonade's going to have sugar. Um, and then at the breakfast time, there is juice at breakfast. And then at the buffet, there's a drinking station where they'll sometimes have hot chocolate packets. But again gonna have sugar so that's what's free now what you can bring aboard and he will put this here too is two wine bottles 750 milliliters max on embarkation day only so if you buy it in port at one of the ports they will hold it for you till the end of the cruise but on day one when you're boarding you can bring up to two bottles of wine. So I know there's some low carb wines out there. Again, the limit's 750 on it. So if you want to have a treat, you know, like some people, they feel like when they go on a cruise or a vacation, you know, oh, well, I want a little bit of alcohol. You know, this might be something where you buy a bottle of wine of the low carb wine and bring it with you to celebrate, right? Um, with that bottle of wine, if you open it up in your room, no charges. But if you bring it to the dining room, there is a corkage fee. Even if you open it yourself in the dining room, they still yeah, charge? Okay. Yeah, well, I, yeah, if you bring it for them, yeah. Okay. That's, my guess is if you bring it unopened into the dining room, um, then they're going to charge a corkage fee. Okay. Um, that's fair. And then also on embarkation day, boarding day, you could bring per state room up to a 12 package of canned or bottled beverage, not alcoholic, um, up to 17 ounces each. So like if you wanted to get, like for us, we're probably gonna get two six packs of ZBS. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll definitely, we're staying at the Holiday Inn, which is near the Orlando airport. So I'm sure there's gonna be some kind of convenience store nearby. 
I'm thinking what we'll do at this point is probably take an Uber to like a local grocery store or Sprouts and maybe with a list of several people so we don't all have to go. We'll just make like a run over there, grab everything that everybody needs and then bring it back. And then that way only one Uber trip, right? And we could all split the cost there and then we, you know, everybody just pays for their whatever they want, right? Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm thinking. Anyways, that, that would be a good thing to do. You're fine. Um, so Zevia's bottled water, if you prefer the bottled, um, or if you want, um, you know, your diet sodas. Now they do have a soda package, which I'm about to get into, you know, but any other non-alcoholic, if you really like, um, you know, like, um, sparkling water that you want to bring again, no more than 17 ounces each and only 12 per stateroom. So I know some people are sharing a stateroom. So keep that in mind, it's 12 total per state room. So if you are sharing with a friend, maybe you each bring a six pack, right? Uh, mm -hmm. And then, so let's get on, that was the free stuff, right? And that's what you can bring aboard. Mm -hmm. I like to say included. Oh, that's true. Because we are yes. paying for it. It's yeah, included it's included in the price. The price of booking right? the cruise. That's true. I'm like saying it's free is a misnomer. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe I'm just a stickler. Not my husband. Let me get adjusted here for the reading, y'all. Okay. And then, so now we're going to talk about the different beverage options, right? So, um, okay. Da, 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 da. Okay, I addressed that. Just making sure I, I've hit my notes here, y'all. Um, so, on the beverage packages, we have different packages. So the first one is just a coffee card. So on the cruise ship, they have a Starbucks, which that you have to go get yourself, right? If you want the Starbucks, it is extra. And it works just like on land. Jerry told us that if you have a Starbucks app with the Starbucks card, that actually works. So if you're trying to budget things in, and you do enjoy Starbucks, that might be something that you go ahead and buy a Starbucks gift card now, you know, with the holidays, maybe tell people, hey, I want a Starbucks card. Even tell people, hey, I'm going on a cruise next year, you know, I'd like this or that, or give me a Royal Caribbean gift card or this and so forth to kind of help offset some of the expensive. We've done that before as well. So you can tell them, you know, give me a Starbucks gift card and save it for the cruise, right? Um, since those do work on the cruise ship. The coffee card itself, there is a coffee shop on board that will make specialty coffee. So like a Frappuccino or a uh, flavored coffee or a, a Americano or, you know, cappuccino, latte, all of those. They have that on, and I didn't find it exactly if they all have heavy cream and the different, you know, milks that they have. But if you're interested in a coffee card, so if you are fine just drinking the, I would call it ship cruise coffee, which is fine. Like when I have breakfast, I'm good with in the dining room, they're pouring my cup of coffee. I will drink that all day long because I like cheap. I'm just laughing because I'm making sure you said ship coffee. <laughs> that was sometimes just a little coffee snob, so that's what I'm wondering. <laughs> um, but if you do want to have fun with it, you can buy the coffee card. It's up to 15 coffee drinks, and I'm going to bring up what the current pricing is on the coffee drink card. It's $31 for the coffee card. And it's now, a one-time fee? Yeah, it's one-time fee, okay. and you get a card that it basically works like a punch card, right? Okay. Um, but again, it does not cover Starbucks. This is just for their actual coffee shop. Um, okay, so that to me, you decide if it's worth it, if you want those specialty drinks all the time, or if you're a Starbucks person, maybe just save up for the Starbucks. Um, the next thing, so we're gonna start at the bottom and then work ourselves up. So the base drink package they call it their uh, classic soda package. 
right? So the classic soda package is going to be what covers your sodas. So what they do is they have those freestyle machines. I see the most common like at movie theaters where it has the big Coca-Cola and you have, you know, 50 different drink combinations you can select. So what happens if you get the classic soda package, you will get a Royal Caribbean keepsake tumbler. On there is an RFID. So that's how it knows that you've got that soda package. So when you go up to that machine, it'll read it and dispense it. Now there is a timer. So like we like to bring our drinks, right? Our bottles. So if you fill that tumbler up, you have to wait about a minute more before you can fill it up again. And that's to also prevent you, you know, sharing with all your friends and that you're not just continuing pouring into a cup and grabbing and pouring. So they do kind of limit that a little bit, um, just in the time frame on how quickly you can refill it. So on those, you do have to go to those stations to do it. Um, and those or are at the bar or at the buffet? Yes. Okay. Well, you'll see them throughout the buffet area to okay. go and fill. And that's all self-service on that? Yeah, that's self-service. Okay. Now, in the dining room, you'll be able to show them, hey, I've got the soda package, so then they'll bring your drinks over. Nice. Uh, it also includes, so not only the sodas from the freestyle machine, in that freestyle machine is also flavored and sparkling waters. Okay. So if anybody's used the freestyle machine, we've used them a couple times, like at movie theaters and what have you. You know, you, you go through and you select, you know, if there's Coke or diet, and then it'll say water, and then under water you could choose, like, flavored, and they have, you know, several different flavors, or you could choose sparkling, and then it will dispense that. And then you have it in your tumbler, and you go throughout your day and refill it when you want. So if you're looking at the classic soda package, right now, again, prices can change, it's $8.99 per guest per day. Wow. Okay. Yeah, but if you think one day to consider, and again, this doesn't include Starbucks. So every time I go over the drinks, they're not including the Starbucks, right? <laughs> right. Um, it's an island on its own. Right? Uh, but if you think about it, if you're somebody to buy a soda on the ship, it's approximately $5 each one. So if you think about the price point, $8.99 per day, per guest. So if you're somebody who's going to drink more than two sodas a day or sparkling waters a day, it's probably best to go with the soda package because you'll end up coming ahead. Plus, you'll get that uh, tumbler that's yours to keep. Huh. Um, but it, it's up to you. Like me, I've never been like a soda fanatic. So for me, I am fine with regular water, regular tea, and then like he'll bring his Zevias on board because we're trying to be cheap here. And then also what I'll do is I'm gonna bring my Ultima, my Element. We'll probably bring some Red Light. So then when I feel like I need something with some flavor, guess what? I can refill this for free in the buffet area and then add my electrolytes to it. Yeah, and I'm gonna bring a thing of uh, powdered tea so I can make up my own in the room. Yeah. And I was going to bring a uh, half gallon container to mix it up in. Yeah. And then I don't so, have to do the package. I'll have enough to drink. Yeah. So that's how we kind of cut corners in some yeah. places so we can splurge in others. So that's the classic soda package. Again, you have to look at how, how are you going to drink things on board and you know, what do you think you're going to do? And you know your budget. If this is maybe your one trip for the year, maybe you want to go all out. And right. then speaking of going all out, so then there's the refreshment package. So go it up a step. So this one is currently $29.99 per guest per day. Now here's the difference. So you get everything in the first one, the classic soda. So you get that Coca-Cola. Um, Freestyle. Freestyle, the souvenir cup, so all of that, plus you're going to get what they call mocktails. So those are like cocktails without the alcohol. Now, when it comes to that, I don't know how many of those are going to be sugar free. Right. Right. So you have to think of that part. And then it does also include bottled steel and sparkling water. Oh, that's good. 
Um, and then also, this is what I like, it does include a, the premium coffee and tea. Again, not from Starbucks. Um, so that you go to that cafe and get your specialty coffee or your specialty tea. If you enjoy having, you know, a nice tea at the end of the day that's specialty, like a chai or something, that would be included. And then also fresh squeezed juices. Now I mentioned you do get free juice at breakfast, but it's usually, you know, they're, it, they're usually cartons of juice. So this is saying fresh squeezed. So, you know, again, think of the pricing. This one is going to be, you know, close to $30 a day currently. So if you're averaging, usually mocktails, I think, are a little higher, like 8 or $9 a drink. Yeah. So figure out, you know, what you're planning to do. Again, if you're going to really enjoy having the premium coffees and teas, and plus you want to drink sodas, this might be a better package option for you. Now, I got a question about that though. Now, I've seen with some cruise lines where they require for anybody in the stateroom to get it also. Yeah. Is that what they do as well? Uh, I think. Or can not, I get it and not you? Okay. So we don't have to buy two of them is what I'm trying to get at. I think on, let's see. I'm trying to Am check. Am I jumping ahead of you? I'm sorry. No, on these so far, the soda, and the refreshment, no, one person in the stateroom can purchase okay. it and not the other. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, the one that he's referring to is called the Deluxe Beverage Package. So, again, we're going to circle back. It's going to include that classic soda package plus the refreshment. So, you're getting all the sodas out of the freestyle. You're getting also the specialty coffees, teas, juices, and the bottled drinks. Then this one also includes the alcohol. Now it is limited to 15 dr alcoholic drinks, not regular drinks, the 15 alcoholic drinks per day and also includes any frozen cocktails and liquor. So there's a huge line of all the different ones. Uh, but this one you do, if one adult in the room that's a drinking age, then everybody has to buy it. So like if Heath and I, and Heath is like, no, oh, I gotta have the drinking package. I'm, I'm gonna have rum every night. Then they would make both of us purchase this package. Now you can contact like Debbie or Royal Caribbean and say, look, he's the alcoholic here. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not gonna drink it. And usually what they do is make you get like the refreshment package or the soda package but then you both still have to have some type of package. And it just requires a little more finagling if you're going to do that. Now this one, ready y'all? $69.99 a day yeah. per guest. And that's the one that also it's $20 and below is the, what you're uh, able to yeah, uh, yeah. choose Yeah, yeah, the from. drinks have to be 20 and below. Yeah. So again, it, to me, if you really enjoy your liquor and cocktails and you really can see yourself having several of those a day and on top of your sodas and coffees might be something you would want to look into. Oh. Uh, but I've always found we never paid for that package. We got it one time uh, for free by booking. Uh, sweet. Okay. Yeah, some special package. And, I mean, to get to 15 drinks, like, we couldn't do it. Like, no. we, we even one day set out, that was our goal. We're going to see if we can do it. And I think we got maybe to 10. So, but we could be very well just lightweight, you know? Yeah, I, I've always told everybody, I'm a sleepy drunk. Yeah. So, that's your drink packages. Comment down below if you have any questions about that. No. Um, let us know if this is helpful. Um, did I miss anything? Do you have any information to help with that? You know, let, yeah. let me know. Help us out too, please. Yeah. So now we're going to move on to dining, right? Um, so, you know, with the cruise, you hear it all the time. Oh, you go on a cruise, you're going to gain 15 pounds, right? It, again, it's all up to you. You decide. With the cruise ship, most of the time you can eat like 24 I'm about the I know, 24 7, right? So, 
find your stride. It, it's really, we've done keto a couple times now on a cruise. It's not that difficult. We even did carnivore on a cruise. And it, was it was super not simple. Difficult. The good thing is they will work with you and you can order, if even at the already covered restaurants, what's included, you can get multiple items. So don't feel like, oh, well, I can only get the six ounce sirloin. No, so you like, can say, give me two sirloins. Well, I've, I've done it before too, where there's like three entrees I really, really wanted. And I told them just to bring that. I said, knock off the sides, just bring me the entrees. And they did it, no problem. Yeah, yeah. or like uh, in the main dining room where most of us will be having dinner every night, um, oftentimes they'll have standard, or they call them classics, appetizers and oh, one of shrimp. them is the shrimp cocktail and we tell them you know no cocktail sauce and it's i think four shrimp on it yeah well we'll just tell them bring us two of those like yeah. i mean four shrimp really so i'll say bring two of those and that's my appetizer or you know have that you know with the steak or whatever you're having so let's get into it so first i'm going to go over what's included dining meaning there's no extra charge for this so if you're planning your cruise and you want to make sure hey you pay x amount for this cruise up front right it has to be due i think in february it's all paid in february and you don't want to incur any other expenses which i try to do that as much as possible yes. if i could get off the ship with a zero balance i'm so happy she feels like she wanted the casino <laughs> i'm saying so here's your included options so i'm going to go through each one now uh, if you are a pinnacle or a sweet guest, they do have their own special kitchen. It's called Coastal Kitchen, oh, which is on deck 17 mid, but that's only for those that are pinnacle and sweet guest, and not junior sweet. I believe it's just regular sweet. So those do have some coastal fares. They call it like light seafood type food that you could go and get snacks on. I, I figure it's kind of like nibbles. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty cool, though. Um, a little perks for those who yeah. sail with them a lot. Right. Or, or bump or, up to a better room. Yeah. Or one of the extravagant, the, the bougie rooms. <laughs> um, and then also room service is usually included. Now, for Continental and American breakfast, yes, but if you're ordering anything else, there is a $7.95 fee for room service outside of the Continental American Breakfast, okay? okay? So, you know, if it's late at night, like, oftentimes when we would do room service is we've been in port all day, and we get back on the ship, and we don't feel like going to the buffet, and we just order, like, because honestly, this is our thing. We, we're out, you know, you're tired. You've been, you got up at 6 in the morning, so you could get off that ship right away at this first port, Go do your excursion, which you're walking all over the place, and then you're hot because it's the Caribbean. You get back on the ship, and you're like, oh, I feel dirty. I feel hot. I'm tired. And so you just want to take a shower and relax. So you're like, you know what? Let's just order some room service. Get a couple, like, uh, cheese plates or veggie plate or, you know, a sandwich, and we'll just take the bread off or maybe a hamburger and just take the bread off. And then I could order my room service. I hop in the shower. By the time I'm done, then here comes the food, yeah. right? And that's how we would do it before. So if you do that, it is there is a fee now. It's seven ninety five. That's not um, bad, right? But that's if again the buffet is usually going to be open, so you go over there. So it's just if you have to have it. Now I know a lot of us do intermittent fasting, so we'd probably be like, you know what, dinner's in a couple hours. We'll just wait. Yeah. and relax, take a little napper. Um, so moving on, the first thing is what's called Windjammer. Windjammer is the name of their buffet. So when you hear Windjammer, and usually when you get on the ship on embarkation day, they're gonna try to push everybody to Windjammer. So I'm gonna give a tip on that too, which I'm thinking we might even do a video on what to expect on embarkation day. Tell me if, if you want that video too down below. But basically, when you board the ship, they're gonna say, go to Windjammer, go to Windjammer. They try to push everybody there. You don't have to, y'all. Usually, the dining room will be open for lunch. Typically, on embarkation day, it's like 12 to one, so it's a real short window. 
Um, so that's why I'm hoping we'll get to the ship early and all of us be able to go because I love going to the dining room when yes. I first get in as it makes me feel spoiled. Uh -huh. um, but of course, Windjammer, that's your jam is just go up there and do that thing. Or there's also what's called the solarium, which I'll go over that. So there are other options. Don't feel like you have to go to Windjammer. But the Windjammer, the buffet, is going to be probably our most popular place to go. So it's going to be open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner on certain days. And um, they also have afternoon. So like for continental breakfast, is typically 6.30 to 10.30. So at 6.30, they're just going to have little continental, you know, danishes and all that stuff, all that carbs. Yeah. We're not going to go there. And then their full breakfast buffet starts at 7.30 to 10.30. So 10.30 a.m., if you're somebody on a CD8 likes to sleep in, 10.30 breakfast is done. So, but otherwise, 7.30 to 10.30, and what I like is you go get what you want, boiled eggs, They'll have where you get your omelet made. Usually they'll have like, I think they'll even do fried eggs. There'll be lots of bacon, sausage, all those good things. And you just go and do it yourself. You'll get familiar with the buffet. You go in a line, get pick out what you want. There's usually little sections. You go to different ones. And, and then you just go find a place to sit. Don't they usually make a pretty good uh, custom omelet for you too? Uh-huh. And then you get to pick out the, what you want in the omelet. Yeah. Um, well, some lines you check off. Okay, that's cool yeah. too. And then you go and sit wherever, and usually they'll still have wait staff that'll come by, usually like refill your coffee, or there is like a little drink station to go and get your water and tea and stuff. But also they're good about coming around and refilling drinks too as needed. Um, so definitely to us, the Woodjammer is a great place, especially on port days to go get breakfast and leave, right? Um, it's also good for lunch, so lunch hours are going to be 12 to 2, and it's, it's going to generally have the same food that you find in the dining room, but again, here's the thing, you have to get up and you go and get yourself, for some people that's easier, because then they're like, oh, I don't have to tell him this complicated order, I could just go and get the you know, whatever beef bourguignon or whatever it is that's on there. And it just works like a traditional buffet. So you go in line, pick out what you want, put it on your plate, go find a place to eat, and that's fine. So that's a good option. And then afternoon tea and snacks are in there from four to five. And then dinner on the days that it open is like six to nine. So um, good options. I don't think dinner is on... Um, C days, if okay. I remember. There's cer certain times, I believe. Somebody correct me. And then um, your main dining room is also included. So it's it will tell you the main dining room. It is on decks three, four, and five. Now, five, last I heard, was for the anytime dining. Three and four is usually where we'll be. One thing... When you go to the main dining room, you can't go down to the third and walk all the way to the back because it is in the back or aft. You have to like go to five, go all the way to the aft elevators, and then go down to three. Just a little quirky oh, thing about the, the, uh, kitchen. the galley. Yeah. Yeah. And then you're, you're, you're not allowed to go through there as a right. regular. Um, yeah. Uh, so it is just uh, a little a little nuance as you learn on a cruise ship, but you catch on because then you'll be like, oh, I can't go beyond this point. And they're like, yeah, you got to go up or go down a few and then go back up. So it's fun things to learn. But the main dining room, it they do set up. Again, this is going to be like your traditional restaurants, right, where you can sit down. So usually for breakfast and lunch, you're going to go, and it'll be like going to a restaurant here on land. You walk in, and you might have a few people in front of you, but they're pretty good about getting people seated. They'll ask, how many in your party? So if you're wanting to share, like I hope we all are, um, share with, you know, a group of us, say, oh, there's eight of us, and they'll go and put us together. And then you'll have a waiter, he'll come by, he'll give you a menu. Usually it's like just a little one page menu for breakfast and lunch, sometimes two. 
And then he'll come by and he'll, you know, ask what you want to order. Again, order as many as you want. If you're like, oh, wow, I want, you know, this omelet with bacon and cheese. And I want another omelet with ham and cheese. You could do that. Anything or you want. Or you get it and you don't like it. Yeah. Ask for the menu again and order something else. Exactly. Don't feel like, oh, well, now I'm stuck. That's the best thing about a cruise is, you know, if you don't like it, it's you're not your forced. It's your cruise. Yeah. So for breakfast, the main dining room will be open 7 to 9 a.m. So you see a little shorter hours there. Um, so that's a good option. And then lunch is going to be 12 to 2. So, you know, short little window there. And I know on C days when we will be having all of the speakers, they're going to have a break time for lunch during that. Mm -hmm. So you just decide, you know, what you want to do during that time, whether you're going to go to the dining room or up to the buffet. Um, and then, of course, dinner and the main dining room is going to be whatever time you told Debbie when you booked the cruise. So I know most of us are in the early time. Okay. The next thing that is included, and this is some stuff, again, most of these will be open on embarkation day. There's what's called the Park Cafe. This is what they call their deli. And it's going to be located on Deck 8 Midship. So good deli selection. So you can just tell them, oh, leave off the bread. Maybe you want an unwitch, right? Go up there and do that. There's also, um, and they're also open for breakfast too. Johnny Rockets for breakfast is free. Oh, wow. Only for breakfast. If you go for lunch, there, there is an additional charge, but it is included for breakfast. They're on deck six midship, and they'll have stuff like omelet, omelets, eggs, bacon, your traditional breakfast. So if that's something you prefer to do, that's an option. Another breakfast, I'm gonna go through, here's what's open for breakfast. We have um, Cafe Promenade, which is actually open 24 hours, oh deck nice. five mid, and that's where you're gonna get your coffee, and your specialty coffees, and then that's just like kind of grab and go. That's the one that's like the Princess International Cafe. With that so, one included, that's not an extra. No, these are all included okay, right now. Perfect. So this is open 24 hours. You go by there and they change it throughout the day where they'll have different foods and they're usually like snack size. And so- And uh, breakfast, aren't they mostly like pastries and carbs of some yeah, sort? Yeah, usually and it's pastries, more of a continental, yeah. but you go by there and get your specialty coffee in the morning. Um, and again, that's deck five. Also breakfast, there's what's called Vitality Cafe. And that one um, is going to be near the spa area. That's going to be your casual kind of food, thick spa food. They're mostly known for their smoothies. So if you are getting the deluxe or refreshment package, that's where you go for your juice smoothie. I don't feel like a lot of us will be getting those. All right. Um, and then there's also the Solarium Bistro. So I mentioned this before. So you have your wind jammer, which is the main buffet. The other one is called the solarium. So this is um, in the aft, I believe, and I don't know why I didn't write it down, but this will have breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It's also a buffet. It's more Mediterranean style. Oh, okay. But they also have like bratwurst I saw. They will do omelets to order. A lot of people kind of go to this area because it is adults only. It's 21 and up. Oh, nice. And a lot of people early in the cruise don't know about the Solarium Bistro. They're just hitting wind jammer. So this is something that, you know, if, if we make it too late to the ship, we don't want to go to the wind jammer, we can head up to the Solarium and be able to kind of go through there rather quickly and not have, you know, crowds of people and there are probably more seating options. Yeah. So this is a nice little bistro that you go to breakfast, lunch, or dinner. And what deck is that one on? I didn't even write it down. Okay. I failed y'all. I'm sorry. That's fine. This gives us more to learn on the ship. <laughs> and then for lunch, this is included. There's a place called Mini Bites. Oh. This is going to be near the pool. So they can pull food. So it's going to be a lot of grab and goes. So it's going to be like taquitos. Uh, pizza, sliders, yeah, but it's on uh, deck 15 aft by the pool. 
so that, you know, if you get out of the pool, you go grab you a slider and then take the bun off if you wanted. Um, and then there's, of course, the park cafe for the deli, deck eight bin, and then there's what they call doghouse. Mm. Now, the doghouse is their hot dog place. Um, it's on deck, deck six mid, and they have like four or five different hot dogs that are already pre-done. And then also you could just say, well, I just want a hot dog with these toppings. It does come with either coleslaw or potato salad. It's included. So you decide what you want. You could just say, oh, I don't want either one of those. Just give me three hot dogs. Just, just the dog. And what are the hours on that place? And then this one, um, it closes at 7 p.m. Okay. So that's one. So you could go there for dinner if you didn't feel like going to the dining room. Mm -hmm. And then also, what is open for lunch and dinner is Sorrento's Pizza. That's deck five mid, and they're actually open late. So some people, after dinner or whatever, later that night after a show, will actually go to Sorrento's just to hang out and chit chat. Uh, but it is their pizza place. So, I have heard from others that you can go there and get basically a keto bowl pizza where they put the pizza toppings in aluminum foil and cook it for you. So, that might be a great option for lunch one day. I mean, I know we're open to pizza. Yeah. Uh, and, of course, the Vitality Cafe is also open. Again, that's going to be, think of your, like, spa food. And then... Um, went jammer for lunch and then dinner again you could go to the dog house for hot dogs but it closes at seven and then the pizza place and then most of us will probably go into the dining room for our dinner okay so that's all that's included to me that's a big offer. yeah you've got a lot of options there the buffets have always been incredible to me there's always lots of options on there for us that you could choose from and, and it changes every day so and one it will day, also mimic what's in the dining room plus a few more items right right so it's like the whole dinner menu plus maybe a couple other things so you can pick and choose what you want um so a lot of people Does it do the same at lunch yeah okay oh uh, i just remember at dinner i just i couldn't remember about lunch mm -hmm. generally at lunch so it, it does change sometimes they'll have like themes yeah and it'll be like, oh, today's Italian theme, so it'll be more Italian-inspired food, that kind of thing. So, usually there's plenty of options. Yeah. Uh, so, now we're going to start on what's for pay. Uh -huh. I'm sorry. <laughs> and so, number I one, I just want to say Starbucks. <laughs> no matter what package you get, it Starbucks. It sounds like this video is brought to you by Starbucks. I'm saying. It's extra. So, it's going to, Starbucks is located on Deck 6 Midship. So you'll learn pretty quickly, there's forward, mid, aft. So midship, deck six is where Starbucks is. Um, again, you'll just go there anytime you want, you know, a nice Starbucks drink. So for lunches, these are all extra. Uh, you have Johnny Rockets. Now, Johnny Rockets um, does charge $7.99. For that, you get a burger, a side, and a soda. Oh, wow. Which, you know, if you're doing one of the soda packages, I mean, you're already giving a soda, right? But anyhow, and then they also have for extra either a shake for 5 or an adult shake, that means alcohol, for $9. And your wow. prices can change uh, in addition to the $7.99. So... If that's something you want to do, I've heard that Johnny Rockets, I mean, I've gone to the uh, an actual storefront here. They usually put a little song and dance every once in a while. So it is fun, but, I mean, to me, for $7.99 for just a burger patty, eh, I'll just go to one of the other already paid for options, right? Mm. But that's an option for you if that's what you want to do. Another one for lunch is called Saber. This is a uh, deck six mid, so it, oh, Johnny Rockets is deck six mid as well. Uh, most of the restaurants you're gonna find are in the middle of the ship. So Sar Saber is their Mexican. Oh, okay. So this actually sounds pretty good. So they of course have classic things like burritos, tacos. They also do ceviches, Ooh. which is a keto option. 
Um, also homemade guacamole. They'll actually make it table side for you and with the fresh avocados. So this is something that, you know, if, if you do enjoy that, you might want to bring aboard some pork rinds and then go have some homemade guacamole. Now their items are priced per item. So it's like going to a real restaurant. Well, if you want the guac, it's this price. If you want like tacos, it's like three tacos for a certain price. So it's that kind of setup. But I think savory would be good if you're like, you know what? I just want to go have some pork rinds and guac today. And you bring your pork rind to go in there and order that fresh made guacamole, which sounds amazing to me. And that would be, you know, a, a, a good simple lunch. Yeah. Right? Um, but that sounded really good. And then the other one for lunch is called Jamie's Italian, which is Deck 8 Mid. Again, that's going to be Italian food, so mostly pastas. Um, next is Izumi Hibachi and Sushi. So oh. this is, if you've ever heard of um, Benihana's. Yeah. It's the same, similar setup. So when you go in, you either choose if you want the Tapanaki, which is either a $45.99 or $49.99, like they have it rogue, depending on what option. You get a complimentary salad, which usually has like a ginger dressing, and then you choose your entree, and it'll either fall under the $45.99 or the $49.99 entree, and then desserts included. So you could do that, and uh, or the other option is they do serve sushi rolls. So if you're into sushi rolls, uh, they have they range from thirteen to seventeen dollars a roll. Um, so you go and, and do that. Uh, the other thing that's open for lunch is actually the Chops Grill does have a lunch menu. So this is their steakhouse. Uh, but they are open for lunch on sea days only. Oh, wow. And it's $22.99 a person. That doesn't sound too bad. No, not for a steakhouse. So right. you do usually get like an appetizer. They'll have options, some type of steak or meat, and then a, a dessert, right? So, yeah, I thought that was pretty good. Now, for dinner, there's lots of options for the dinner. So, one, again, Johnny Rockets, same thing there. Savior is also open for dinner as well. The Jamie's Italian. Now, here's one thing I did see on Jamie's Italian. Uh, for their apps, they actually had a meat plate. Oh, that thing. A burrata, which sounded good, and garlicky prawns. I thought oh. those those are all great keto options. Yeah. Their mains, they also had burger, which, okay. And then lamb chops, which sounded that would be good. Um, keto option salmon chicken also a short rib which I know you would go for yeah. and then they do offer where you get a side uh, with the entree and they did have a salad as a side option or some like sauteed greens right. so th that's a, a nice dinner um, also at dinner there's the a hibachi and sushi izumi Hibachi and sushi, same pricing and setup. Um, and then they also. So the price is the same for lunch or dinner on that one, huh? Yes. Okay. And I've heard on several of these, if you are wanting to go to one of these pay for restaurants, try to book it the first day you're on there because they do reserve quickly so that you get the time that you want. Oh, that's true. Because yeah. that's a popular thing. Right, right. Some of these are very popular. Like they said, especially the hibachi mm -hmm. tends to fill up or get reserved rather quickly. So if you are wanting to do one of those and you're not as flexible with your date and time, try to reserve it on the first day. Um, another option they have, it's called 150 Central Park. Mm. It's on Deck 8 Men. Uh, now, some of these do have dress code requirements. So the 150 Central Park, the Chops Grill, and a couple others, uh, you need to have smart casual. So basically you can't go in your shorts. But the 150 Central Park is sort of like a, I would say like an upscale American, modern American. So here's some 
uh, options for an appetizer would be like a Caesar salad. They did have a pork belly that seemed pretty clean short, and a short rib appetizer. Entrees, they had halibut that sounded good, venison, duck, veal, and lobster thermidor, and beef tenderloin. Uh, so again, all those you, minor adjustments probably on them because I think a couple of them said on like a mashed or pureed, you know, root vegetables or something. You just don't oh, leave that off. And then um, on the dessert menu, it actually had a cheese plate. So you could, you know, order those and then when it came to dessert, just say, oh, just give me the cheese plate. So those are good too. Um, I got a question about the dress code though. Mm -hmm. So remember on Princess... For breakfast and lunch, you were allowed to wear shorts, but at dinner, you had to wear jeans or slacks. Yeah. Is it the same on this line? I think it is, okay. yeah. Because that's something to keep in mind, too, is when you're planning your night. Yeah, exactly. And then, of course, we still had the Chops Grill, mm -hmm. uh, traditional steakhouse. Now, for dinner, that one's going to be an extra $49.99 per person. And I actually printed out the menu here nice. to kind of get an idea. Um well, also on Princess, when you're in the the standard dining room, they will have snippets of that menu that you can add to it as well as an extra. Yes. But we found that it's actually a better deal just to go ahead and go, if you want that stuff, to go ahead and go to yeah. the dining, the, the steakhouse and have it. So you get the full thing. Yeah, because you'll notice on our menu, in even the main dining room, there'll be extras where it'll say surf and turf or whatever, and it'll be a different price. That might be a little bit cheaper. That, like, I think when I saw one, it was like surf and turf for thirty five ninety nine, versus the chops is forty nine ninety nine. But to me, it's kind of worth the extra fifteen dollars for the whole atmosphere, the appetizer, and just it, it's just a very romantic place to me to go for dinner. So if you're wanting more of that little romance one on one, then you know. If you're if you're really wanting that, I would suggest booking the chops grill rather than just ordering it in the dining room. But it's your cruise, do what you want. So here's some suggestions of the chops grill. Again, these things can change. You know, it, it can be seasonal. So appetizers, uh, they have it. They call it colossal shrimp cocktail. Nice. So you see the on the main dining room, you're gonna have shrimp cocktail. It's more like this the salad is, shrimp, right? Right, and this is going to be the colossal. They also do tuna tartare, which would be a good keto option. Um, they have a lump crab cake, which uh, I don't know there. might have some gluten. They also have beef carpaccio. Oh, wow. And the, I like this one, grilled black pepper bacon, Ooh. which they call it slow-cooked Berkshire, Berkshire pork. Oh, and then a sweet and spicy glaze. So you have to see, hey, can you take the glaze off? And then they also do uh, soups, which, you know, either a mushroom soup, lobster bisque, Ooh. and then they have different salad options, which are Caesar, a crispy goat cheese salad, which that one does have some candy, walnuts, and green apples. So, meh. And then they also do a classic wedge. So all of this is included in the $49.99. And then your mains, and you only, now one thing with this, like in the dining room, you could say, you know what, give me three New York strips. On here, it's one. You can't have multiples of the same thing. But on this, they'll have like a traditional filet. They'll have a bone-in ribeye, which you're not going to really see that on the no, main no, no. dining room. It's a New York strip is their meat on there. Uh, they have a prime New York strip a rack of lamb, and then roasted chicken. Um, or for seafood, they do branzino, spicy jumbo shrimp, Atlantic salmon, or one and a half pound Maine lobster, which is an extra on top of the extra. And then you get to an choose. An extra on the extra? Yeah, it actually is. It's wow. $21 on top of the $49.99 wow. if you want the lobster. Okay. Uh, and then you choose your sides, which are shareable. So. Sides that I would say are keto options. They have cream spinach, grilled jumbo asparagus, sauteed mushrooms, and then the rest are potatoes and such. So that's the chops grill. You know, if you want, you know, something 
really nice out one night. That's a really good option there. And then, um, okay, that was the 150, which I went over that. Okay, so that's the pay restaurants. And then the other option that is an extra, oh, well, there's two more, I'm sorry. One is called Wonderland. Mm -hmm. This is deck 12 aft. So this is, they try to make it sound like Wonderland, like Alice in Wonderland is the whole thing. So it's supposed to be really fun and whimsy. They say the menu changes, and when you go in, you actually don't get like a menu. You get handed this um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, board, like a paint board. What are they called? Uh, I, An easel? Easel, yeah. And you get a paintbrush, and then the paintbrush is magical. So when you start washing it over the little framed easel, it'll start revealing what the menu is tonight. So it's all really fancy. Interactive. Really interactive and just uh, supposed to be very whimsy for you. So, you know, using the paintbrush and then they do some things that are really high culinary feats. Now, how much is that? And that one, I, I didn't get the price on okay. it actually. But um, I think it was pretty, pretty expensive. But that one does sell out fast, and on that, when I looked at some people who have done it, y'all, it it's like standard American. You know, you're going to have a lot of carbs, and because it's all preset, you the only thing I get, I think you get to choose is your main, but most everything else is all preset, and then, because it's supposed to be a whole experience, like, instead of having a regular appetizer, like they serve it in a test tube, one of the appetizers. So you're supposed to swallow it a certain way and you get different flavors and um, kind of like when we ate at um, Eculent, yeah. where, okay, so yeah, that's in a test tube. Okay, this one looks like an ice cream cone, but then you taste it and it tastes something different that kind of thing and then um what they call it gastromedy or whatever right exactly and then dessert is also something that's really fun like um one person who had it last year like they or the year before they served it looked like just a regular ball and then he poured this hot sauce and when it melted away then it revealed like a whole new dessert it was really cool so this is something really cool i would say this is my thinking y'all if you want to splurge, if you're like, you know what, I have been strict keto, or I've been keto for so long, I just want one meal, right, one meal to have a planned deviation where I'm just going to enjoy myself, and I want to try something that I would never get to have otherwise. Because to me, if I'm going to deviate from normal keto, I don't want to deviate with a McDonald's Whopper or whatever their sandwich is called. What is it? The Big Mac. Yes, I don't want to deviate with a big bag. Uh, uh, Burger King. Burger, right? That's how often you eat out. <laughs> but um, I wouldn't want to deviate with something that I know I can get all the time. Now, of course, it's your life. You do what you want. But if you're thinking of, you know what, I just want one night where I'm just going to let loose, enjoy what I want to enjoy for one night, this might be your splurge because it sounds very fun. Uh, very interactive. She's outside. I know. Um, and she wants to go too. She wants to be interactive. But it, it sounds like something you would really enjoy and just have a fun experience and taste things that you would not normally taste. Right? You're going to experience the food itself. It's not just going to be a regular restaurant. So I think if you are thinking, you know what? I'm just going to go off one day. That might be something you decide to book and do. If you do, let us know because I love to hear about those things and what you experience. I'm not going to give you any side eye because you know what? You only live once. If you want to enjoy one meal, like I said, it's your cruise. Right. Then do it. Um, I mean, when we went on our last cruise, we were in Spain and I was like, okay. We've never had a like authentic churro in Spain, and they do it different than any churros I've gotten here. And I was like, you know what? We're just gonna split an order of churros, and we did that. Mm. Did I feel done. guilty from it? No, because I knew it was just one thing that I was going to get to experience, 
And how often am I going to get to spray? Well, it's been two years. I haven't been back. You know what I mean? We'll book it tonight. <laughs> but uh, that's what I mean. It was it was one thing. We didn't go crazy. Now, of course, Heath over here was like, let's order another one. I was like, no. The so whole, slow down, Turbo. I know. I said the whole point was that we experienced this once. I may have an addictive personality. <laughs> right? And it was like, we wanted to try that because otherwise, when are we going to be back to Spain to try something that's like a dish they're known for? And so, you know, if you feel like doing that, Delilah, you're pushing my water. If you feel like doing that, I think the Wonderland to me, it just sounds really cool. But I get into that whole like gastronomy and um, just fun uh, to me, that would be fun to get a paintbrush and be like, ooh, what's it going to be? Yeah. You know, I would enjoy all of that. And it'd be fun to do that with, like, a group of friends. And we all go there and be like, oh, this would be cool. Oh, what did she think of that? What? Because, um, you know, we've done things like, like when we did Eculent, it was just such a mind-blowing experience. Yeah, we really amazing. enjoyed that. Which leads me to the last extra, which is called the chef's table. Oh, now, the yeah. chef's table, it is formal. So that means you have to be dressed up. And it is $89.99 per person. Um, you usually, if you are interested in the chef's table, you want to get that book. I mean, as soon like as soon as you get in your room, that's You can't the, do it before you board, though. Right, right. You have to want your own board. As soon as you get in your room, you need to call and book it. Yeah. Put your name on the list. Because they usually only do so many of the chef's tables and it and they only do a certain number of people and it fills up fast and the ones we've done i think it was between 10 and 12 max yeah so it is a very special dining experience it's amazing, actually i haven't done it on royal but we've done it on carnival and princess uh yeah yeah we and are foodies we're we are foodie yeah we really enjoy like, I've never been one that was like, oh, Pop-Tarts are 99 cents. Oh, i got to have Pop-Tarts because that's cheap. I'm just going to eat them. I was always like, no, I want to eat something because it's good. Quality like, over quantity. Right. Like, I, he did, like, those stupid Tostitos pizzas. Those they were so cheap. good. No, those were disgusting. I ate cardboard that was tastier. I've never ate cardboard, so. Yeah. I'm one of no, them. you have because you ate those pizzas. <gasps> Um, but to me, it was like, it wasn't worth it. Oh, no, see, I did not like Hot Pockets because they taste like but <laughs> And so I wouldn't waste it on there, which how did I get to this size eating what I thought tasted good? But anyhow, <laughs> so the chef's table, it's, it's a lot of fun. Now, I feel like on this cruise, we're all going to be together. We're going to have such a great time with each other. So I don't really feel like there's a need to do specialty dining in case like a group of us wanted to like go to Wonderland or something. On our past cruises, when we've done the chef table, it's because it was just him and I, and it was an experience to add to our cruise. Again, $89.99 a person, eh, that's a pricey dinner. Yeah. But it's usually about eight to 10 courses. Yeah. Um, you go and it's like, Five star dining, you get, you know, um, you meet specialized the... attention from the staff. They usually have a special sitting room for you. Yeah. And it's all about the show. Now, I haven't seen research grows that much because I was like, we're not going to do this on right. this one. But like on the other ones, you go behind the scenes, you learn, you actually get to go through the galley. Learn how all of that works. Get to see them in action because the galley's always working, y'all. The galley never closes. Um, but you get to go behind the scenes. Um, they would show like how they make a famous recipe of theirs. While you're in the kitchen area, they would usually have little bites for you to try. Oh, like, and the champagne too at the beginning. Oh yeah, you got champagne, um, and then they would uh, have neat things. Like one time we. All, you know, were, they were showing us different things, and they said, okay, here's this. And it looked like an egg yolk. Oh, that's right. And that's what it looked like. And he's like, okay, here's what you do if you want to. Because there were some people who were like, I'm not going to put a raw egg yolk. And he's like, 
Okay, that's your guesses. You know, so they ask everybody, what do you think it is? And he's like, okay, this is what I want you all to do. Put it all of it in your mouth. You can't bite this. You have to put the whole thing in your mouth and close your mouth and then bite down. He was like, you have to do it that way. And I'm always up for adventures, right? So we did that. This thing, at first it exploded and it just was this really sweet, luscious, smooth, and it was cold. And it just the flight, it was like a flavor explosion. It was so good. What it was is they had learned how to basically take this like puree, I think it was like orange and peach or something like that, and they pureed it, and then they froze it, and then they took like the sugar and made it to where it was like, uh, um, I know I'm not butchering this, but basically enveloped it in this glass shiny, where it looked like a egg, an egg yolk, like it looked like a yolk. It was that shiny and smooth texture but what had happened whenever they put that gelatin type thing around the frozen, when the frozen part melted, it stayed in that congealed state. It was awesome. It, it, it yeah. was amazing. And so it was fun because in the galley, you usually have like, what, about four or five little bites of stuff. Yeah. And they're just one bite. That's it. Uh, another time, like he uh, used a frozen block and made like this uh, carnivore lollipop remember yeah, right, yeah. where he rolled it and because the ice because the block was so cold it like cooked it and then he put like uh some kind of like salt on it i don't know it was amazing tasted it so that was really neat to see these really gastronomical creations another and, thing i like is while you're sitting there at dinner eating Oh, now we're moving to I'm the I'm sorry, I jumped ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Go, the but, and so after you do the galley, then they take you to the area where you're going to sit with everybody. And you're getting to know everybody, which you're going to do that all on the cruise. So it's fun because you all have this experience together. And then usually the guy who's heading it, you know, he'll tell little jokes. <laughs> yeah. And then you're seated up. And then what were you going to say? Is while you're eating, like, you, not necessarily the first course, but one of the courses, you'll sit, be sitting there eating. And you'll look over and they'll be working on making up your next course but back behind the staff there'll be a mirror pointing down so you can see what they're actually doing and you'll see them it's like surgical almost they'll have those long tweezers putting all this stuff together plating and then when you finish with this course they have a server for each person yeah they come up and everybody gets served their next course all at the same time yes it's almost like systematic yeah, it's real very big. impressive how they do yes. it. Yes, huge demonstration. Yeah, on and it then, and presentation is just immaculate. And then they also so it does include with that all of the champagne and wine. So you get champagne at the red beginning. Or white, right? right. Well, they do it per course. Yeah. So they'll say with this course we recommend. Oh, that's right. The white wine, and they'll come around. Do you want this? Do you want that? And then plus, if you wanted water or tea, that's included too. But you know, if, if you. Me, if I was paying ninety dollars, I'm getting my drinks. Right, and, and then uh, usually they'll bring in a. Uh, you can get to meet the head chef. Yeah. And they'll bring in a uh, one of the crew members. Also, I thought right. They um, usually bring like a musician or yeah, a um, comedian or a, a magician. Yeah, he'll do magic tricks and stuff for yeah, you. Yeah, something like an that. An entertainer or something. An sort. entertainment for a little bit, you know, while they're in between courses, and usually you'll have a menu then that. Because when you go to the dining room, it'll have it. Uh, you'll have to look and see where your spot is that yeah, you yeah. sit. Uh, Nameplate or whatever. Yeah, and then they'll have it with the menu for that night. And I'm telling you guys, like this is back when we could eat, and it was still like it, by the time dessert came, I was like, how am I going to eat anything else? Because I am full, like and I am stuffed. At the end of the dinner, they take a group photo of everyone. Yeah. And then also, I think it was the well, last one we did on Princess. They gave us a hardback. Uh, yeah, that's what uh, Princess does, uh, is give uh, you a cookbook. Yeah, a cookbook. Right. But Carnival just gave a little menu, uh, a yeah. little recipe. Yeah. But I don't know what Royal does. Yeah. I honestly, again, I didn't look into it that much because I know we're not going to do it. Right. But it is a, an amazing experience. Yes. I always I suggest, enjoyed it every time if, we did it. if not on this cruise, on another cruise, it's worth it. 
to do it for one evening. It usually lasts what about three to four hours. Yeah. Plan your that is your that's evening. your evening. That is your dinner and your entertainment. Right for that evening, it's just a lot of fun. It's great to meet other people, and then I mean, every course is just amazing. I've never, in fact, the very first time we did it. Oh yeah. Um, he used to have like hang up. He's like, oh, I don't like cranberry. Oh, I, I don't like. like this. I like that. I yeah, like this. he's like, I don't like this. I, I swear, she called up and said, Hey, use this, 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 and this, and he's that's like, what they did. I don't like broccoli. I don't like uh, cauliflower. Like he had all these things. He's like, I don't like that. And every freaking main courses that we were going through, like the seven or eight main ones that were on the thing, he would read ahead on the menu, and he's like. Oh, well, this has cranberries in it, and it has tea in it, and it's called a soup. I'm not going to like that. And then they do this presentation. I remember this one because we actually did it a couple times. In the middle was this layered, like, a square, but yeah. it had eight layers. And each one, like, one was cranberries, and one was, like, broccoli, and one was all these. But it was no more than an inch tall. But it had all those layers in it. And then when they came... Sorcery. <laughs> to pour, the the soup was a um, a tea, like a chai tea soup. And so they poured in there, and it was chilled, right? It was like a chilled so. soup. And so then as it's pouring, that thing in the middle starts to slowly dissolve into the soup. And he was just like, he's like looking at it like, no, no. And he starts eating, he's like, what the heck, this is delicious. And he really, and he enjoyed every single dish that they had that night. That's another reason why we're not going to do it too, now that we're keto. Yeah. They do start off with a, a giant plate of uh, bread of some sort. Yeah. It's either like an actual, like a mini loaf of bread, or it's a bread sticks, like the real long ones. Yeah. And they'll refresh them as the dinner goes on. Too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it is very... Very extravagant. Very extravagant, like... I mean, we've enjoyed every one we've done. Yeah, we really did, uh, but it's going we to have used to also, tons of carbs and sugar. Yes, we used to, made it a point, we would back off of our excursions and make room to do the chef's table. Yeah. Because we really look forward, that was one of the highlights of a cruise for us. Yeah, we really enjoyed that. So again, if, if you're planning on, yeah. you know what, I'm going to have a planned deviation and I want to do something special with it. That's when you would book it's, one of these. It's a, an experience. Pay edition, something that's really unique that you'll remember because it, it is fun and it just, the things they come up with, I mean, the, and it is pricey, so we would budget it in like as if we're doing an extra excursion. Right. That's how we looked at it. Is yeah. That was one of our excursions. So at one port, like for example, on this one at Coco Bay, we're not going to pay for an excursion. We'll just get off the ship for a little bit, walk around, maybe go to the beaches that's provided, and then get back on the ship. I'll so, probably hit up a gift shop because I collect shot glasses for every time we go somewhere. So I'll just hit up a gift shop and buy a shot glass and get yeah. back on the board. So that's something simple. Yeah. So you know that's how we look at it when it comes to that. Now, with that being said, um, they do have some dining packages. Oh yeah. So if you are looking at, you know, you want to do a lot of these extra restaurants. Um, oops. What, what do they consider it? Fine dining or whatever. Oh, Sauber starts at nineteen ninety nine. Oh, the Wonderland. It's from forty six ninety nine for oh, adults, that so that's not too bad that's for really, Wonderland. Pretty, sounds pretty reasonable. Yeah, and then okay, so for your dining packages, you have um, okay. Oh, hmm. now this one says the chef's table eighty ninety nine. Oh. So again, oh, really? they say it can change, so that's yeah. good. So there's what's called Chops Plus One oh. dining package. So this is where you have one night at the Chops Grill. Plus another night, and it's sixty-seven ninety-nine per adult. Um, so again, that would be one night at the Chops, and um, then a second night at another specialty restaurant of your choice. And then let's see here. Now the Hibachi Grill does have a surcharge in addition to that if you do get the Chops plus one. Oh, wow. So again, that one's sixty-seven ninety-nine per person. And then <clears throat> there's the three-night dining package. 
So this is where you could go um, dinner at three specialty dining venues. And so you get a $35 food credit. Um, and then, so again, the, that's why the Izumi Hibachi is a, an extra surcharge. But on this one, the three dining package, it's $92.99 per adult. So um, that's one thing. So if you're thinking of, you know, oh, I want to do this, you know, eat at all these different places. And then the last one, y'all, again, this is all up to you. It's called the Unlimited Dining Package. It's $183.99 wow. per person. Yes. And this is with a discount right now. Oh. A hundred and eighty three oh. ninety nine per person. This is with the coupon. Yeah. Uh, and then with that, you unlimited visits to the specialty dining restaurants every night of your selling and lunch on C days. So again, not court days, C days only. Um and then Oh, if you go to a restaurant with all cart pricing, you get a $35 food credit. And then they also, if you get this, they do make a courtesy reservation for your first night of your cruise based on your preferred dining time. And you'll get that confirmation when you board that day. Um, and then you just make the changes. Now, these aren't going to be valid on the chef's table, of course. Um... So just kind of keep that in mind. So that's up to you. Again, you choose what you want. I have been very happy with the main dining room. Again, it's your preference. I have known people who eat at the buffet all the time. Every meal. Yeah, every meal. That's just their thing. They, they, they don't like to sit down and be waited on. They just want to get it and go. They especially skip formal night because that way they don't have to get all dolled up. Right, and they just get it, go, and, and do that, right? Yeah. So you could definitely do that. Um, I've always enjoyed the dining room. Per Personally, I like going there for all three meals just because, again, I don't like to be waited on. It's my vacation. Right. Um, now, I do know it is easy to do the buffet for breakfast. Yes. You know, breakfast is breakfast. But I do enjoy the dining room. So we kind of work it out together. Usually... What are we doing tomorrow? Well, yeah, or we'll just say, okay, if we're going to eat at the buffet for breakfast, then, you know, for lunch, I want the dining room. Yeah. And we'll work And a things. lot of that also uh, depends on the, the menu. We'll go ahead of time, because uh, they'll have uh, near the dining room, like for the the, the following meal, they'll have it posted mm -hmm. what the menu is going to be, and we'll decide uh, accordingly. Yeah, because so do. usually the night before, whenever you lose, leave the dining room for dinner, they'll have a board where you can see what the lunch and dining menus will be for the next night. So we'll look at that and say, oh, lunch tomorrow, oh, they're having, you know, this, this uh, beef and broccoli soup, and then they're going to do um, vegetarian pilaf or, you know, just like Let's sometimes. Let's go to pizza. <laughs> right, yeah. Sometimes you see the menu and you're like, oh, none of that even sounds appealing. And so you're like, you know what? Maybe we do Sorrentos for lunch tomorrow and have a pizza. Yeah. And just kind of plan it ahead of time. And but so, there's always lots and lots of options. There's tons, as you can see, I mean, I printed like four pages here. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of options to choose from. And it is very, very easy to stay keto carnivore yes. on the cruise. Yes, as you saw. Honestly, I, it's, I think it's actually easier to stay that way on the cruise than it is on land when you're going out to eat. Yeah. Because they will work with you a lot better than a traditional uh, restaurant on land will. Well, it, Some of is, them, you know, you run into, you've, you've ran into Well, stuff. here's my thinking on that, okay. When you go to a four pay restaurant here on land, you kind of feel like, well, I really want that, but I want this with it. And then it's like, okay, you talk to them and they're like, oh, well, we, we can't do a price difference for that. Yeah. Well, with the cruise ship, it's all included. So, so if I see that on one dish is this chicken that sounds great, but I also want the New York strip, I could be like, look, I want that chicken and the strip. Because I've told that before, and too. It's the I want same. The, yeah, and I'll pull the entree from this one with the side from this one. 
and mix and match it all, and they don't care because it's all basically from the same kitchen, and it's right. all for the same price of what I've already paid. Yeah, it's all included. Or sometimes, you know, it's like, wow, the appetizers are really good. You know what? Just bring me two of the shrimp cocktails. I want the salad. Soup. And you know, or the soup, and then um, bring me the beef carpaccio. Bring me a few of those. That one meatball Mexican soup on the yeah, that we used was to get good. all the time. But you know, you just do that, and that's fine. Yeah. That's why they they will work with us so well, y'all. Yeah. So nothing to worry about there. All you decide from here is what do you want to do. So now you've got your options. You we gone over the beverage. You decide what works for you what you want to drink on the cruise, and then now you've got the dining kind of covered there, and decide, you know, what, what works for you. What do you want out of the dining? So comment down below and let us know, A, was this helpful? <laughs> and then B, what do you want to do? What are you thinking for drinks, and what are you thinking for the dining? Are you just going to stick with what's already been paid for, or does any of these specialty dining sound appealing? And then also, don't forget, every Friday night, 6.30 Central, we'll go live for the Friday night feast. Cook up an entree, maybe a couple little snacks, show you all how to do it. And if you all start asking us questions about the cruise while we're all on, on the live, we'll answer them, them that, bleh, we'll answer, answer you then also. Because right now, how many month, months, how many days uh, until, until the cruise? Like 180 something. Right. Now is when we actually start planning everything. That, yeah. That's why we started this video series. We'll, we actually start packing our stuff, actually, and planning out and seeing what uh, uh, excursions we want to do. We love vacationing. We actually, I'll show a video on it too later. We actually have stuff set aside that stays in our luggage. And it's just for travel. Yeah. So it makes it easy and quick to pack. Yeah. So. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. We look forward this. to talking to y'all. Yeah, definitely. Anytime. Leave us questions. Yeah. Let us know. Please comment down below. Make sure you give us a thumbs up. And hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And in those comments, tell us other little tips and tricks that you do or things you think we should tell people about. Yeah. How we can uh, make these this little series a little better for y'all. More informative. And like I was saying, I've done Carnival and princess but i've never done royal before so this is gonna be a little bit of a hurdle for me but we're also going to be recording while we're on the ship too and releasing those out yeah so stay tuned we have more cruising footage coming thank y'all for watching we'll see y'all next time bye